The recipes, views, and opinions expressed in this channel are solely those of the speaker. They do not reflect, collaborate, or substitute the views and opinions of a medical health professional. Please consult a professional with any dietary concerns and inquiries prior to trying the recipes. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for clicking on this video to get my tasty cardamom coconut steamed donuts. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, it's always a pleasure to have you. Now the goal of this channel is to provide you with foods that are nutritious and satisfying without breaking your calorie banks or sacrificing on flavor. So now, what can I say about donuts? Well, I am or was a Krispy Kreme donut junkie. My Sunday morning started like this. Welcome to Krispy Kreme. How may I help you? Um, yes, can I please have a dozen of your strawberry jelly filled donuts to go, please? Sure thing. That will be $12.50. That box typically was my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes, that is how serious my addiction to donuts was. And this kind of decadence and indulgence only expanded my physical frame which was not flattering and it had to be solved because I was not going to get rid of the donuts so I came up with this recipe and this recipe is high in fiber protein iron and does have some good fats and calcium the best part about this recipe is that I can just eat one because it's filling and satisfying and takes care of my donut cravings. So without further ado, let's jump into the recipe and please do stay tuned for that old wisdom spice. Now to start us off, you will be needing some cardamom. So typically I would buy the ground cardamom and if I don't, I have moved to buying the whole seeds. And here you can see that I do have seeds in it and I'm going to go ahead and millet that. <laughs> I called it milleting, but grinding it with my coffee grinder to be able to get a powder form. It actually is much more pungent and much more better than getting a ground one. So if you have the opportunity to buy the seeds instead of buying the powder, I would highly recommend that. So get that into a powder form. Otherwise, you can always get the ground cardamom. This is just the step that I usually take to prep, to prep my cardamom. Once that's done, we will be needing a bowl and we will be needing some coconut milk so I usually buy a can of coconut milk this is the coconut milk that I prefer because it does have that very tasty coconut flavor to it um, it's very rich in the coconut flavor and I actually need it now if you can get some fresh coconut that is the best option if you can grind it it will take some work but if you grind it you will get some good coconut milk so we will need to warm up my coconut milk so I'm going to be needing about a cup and a half of coconut milk and we're going to go ahead and warm up one cup of it. And I usually will pop that into the microwave and using my finger I will test the temperature of it. And once my coconut milk has been warmed up, I am going to go ahead and take my yeast. You will be needing about two and a quarter tablespoons of yeast and mix that in. And then to have an activating agent, we're going to add some honey to it. So I'm going to add a bit of honey to it. And we'll stir that up and cover it and put it to the side. Next, we'll be grabbing a, mo a mixing bowl. And into that mixing bowl, you will need to put about two cups of whole wheat flour along with one cup of artisan, artisan flour. Now, I mix my flours. If you want to do it whole wheat all together, that's up to you. If you want to do it all white, that's up to you. But that's the ratio that I use. And then into that, we're going to be putting some palm sugar. Now, I use palm sugar as my sugar substitute. You are more than welcome to use regular sugar. Just know that if you do use regular sugar with the measurements that I am using, it's going to be super sweet. So you might want to tone it down or keep it as sweet as you want it. It's just going to be more sweeter than using palm sugar. So I'm going to put eight tablespoons of palm sugar into this. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my cardamom my ground cardamom um, so I'm putting about two and a half teaspoons of cardamom into this um, you can put as much cardamom as you want or you can reduce it it's really up to you however I prefer to have my uh, donuts a bit more cardamom that's a word cardamom go ahead and mix that well and then into this we will also be putting uh, one, te one teaspoon of baking powder and mix that in once you have that very well mixed go ahead and grab your um, yeast mixture that has been sitting aside and as you notice it does actually bubble up much faster than actually mixing it with water so I would be more careful about leaving it sitting for too long so pour that in and then you will be adding another half cup of the coconut milk that was left over remember we had one and a half cups so the yeast took a cup you need half a cup into that and go ahead and mix that in well and then at this point you're going to go ahead and use your hands because you need to go ahead and knead the flour into a dough um, so go ahead and uh, get your hands a bit dirty make sure that they're clean and go ahead and mix that up and it's going to be a bit tacky uh, do not worry about that that's exactly what we need because we need our donuts to be a bit soft so once you have it in a bowl you go ahead and grab your olive oil and you will need about one teaspoon of olive oil drizzle that around and then make sure you roll it all around the bowl the donut it's the the dough itself sorry and the bowl the mixing bowl as well once you have that uh, go ahead and grab a cover for your mixing bowl or like I do I usually use some plastic wrap go ahead and seal that real tight cover that with a cloth and then put it in a warm area I usually put mine in the oven to proof uh, or you can find some people put it in a dryer your washing dryer so your, your cloth washing dryer please do not turn on your dryer if you're going to use that option but let that sit in there and we're going to leave it in there for about an hour to two hours at the most do not exceed two hours I highly highly recommend not to do so but we are just waiting for this dough to double up and while our dough is doubling up and proofing let's talk about the old spice for the day as you know old wisdom is tried and true and this spice has stood the test of time now I'm speaking about cardamom now it is known as the queen of spices and this fragrant spice falls under the family of ginger now honestly this classification was a surprise to me I am still trying to dis demystify it because when I taste ginger and I taste cardamom two totally different types of flavors but because cardamom tends to be much more fragrant I would put it up there with like anise seeds but for some reason it is classified under ginger so if you know why please comment below let us know otherwise cardamom is one of the oldest spice um, the use of this spice dates back to, to at least 4,000 years ago um, cardamom actually originated from wild plants that were located in the West Ghats in the southern Indian hills now the plant somehow was found to be growing in abundance in this area um, and in this area is actually known as the cardamom hills back in the day now this is ancient ancient times the ancient Egyptians used cardamom um, for medicinal purposes but the one ritual that they actually used it for was embalming right so those pharaohs and the mom the mummies you see cardamom was and I can see it because when you do take some cardamom it actually runs through you so I can actually see how they use that to preserve bodies the other thing that they used it for was they would chew the cardamom uh, pods and that would help them with keeping their breath minty fresh and their uh, teeth clean so it's a very good uh, teeth cleaning agent the Romans and the Greeks also used cardamom um, because of its pungent flavors it was put in like aromatic oils and perfumes that they used back in the days the Vikings also discovered the spice during their travels and they brought it back to Scandinavia and then around the 1900s the plantations of the cardamoms um, were set up by 
British colonialists back in the day and much of the green and the black caramels that we see today came from that era. Now Guatemala is known to be the largest commercial producer of caramel. Um, in some parts of Guatemala it is actually considered to be more valuable than coffee. That's how um, polarizing this spice is. When um, when you look at like your Indian cuisines and your Middle Eastern cuisine, cardamom tends to be very popular in the curries and especially in the teas. So think about your Starbucks chai masala. I think that's what they call it. It's a rendition of Indian chai, Arabic tea masala, and some Asian traditional drinks. Um, that's where they. When I first tasted that, I was like, "Yeah, I remember this because I grew up drinking this." Um, and that's pretty much kind of where it comes from. It's actually uh, one of those spices that's immensely p- popular in South Asia. Um, it's also very s- popular in Scandav- Scandinavian recipes. So things like meal wine and clogs, it's used in those things and a lot of sweet pastries and bread. So I tend to put it in most of my baking uh, elements um, as well as in my um, breads if I can. But I tend to drink it more in the tea and in this donut that I'm about to go through with you guys. As far as the medicinal uses for it, so it's got a very huge array of things. We're talking about indigestion, asthma bad breath, um, lowering high blood pressure, uh, it has cancer fighting compounds, it protects from chronic diseases, it helps with anti-inflammatory treatments, um, of course it helps with like uh, oxygen and breathing regulation, it lowers your blood pressure and your blood levels and it's known to protect your liver and also help with anxiety but the best part about it is the weight loss remember i said that i can only eat one for some reason every time i eat one of these donuts i am never feeling for another donut like i used to with the crispy cream so i'm actually a believer in the fact that the cardamom is the reason why my cravings get helped in that so there is so much information about cardamom in the internet. I cannot go through it here, but definitely take some time to look through that. And I highly recommend that you incorporate it in your daily food uses and try find ways to actually incorporate it and use it. Well, so with that piece of information, let's go back to our proofed dough. So once your dough has proofed to about double the size we're going to go ahead and partition it into um, about eight pieces here so I'm eyeballing it if you want to measure it out go please by by all means but what we're going to do is kind of sprinkle a little bit of flour and then we're going to go ahead and partition it into eight and then we're going to make them into balls eight balls and once the balls are done, now we're going to go ahead and start forming the donuts. So I don't usually roll it out. You can use a rolling pin if you want to. But if you press it real well in your hands, it will form into that circular flat ball that you kind of see when you eat like a jelly filled donut. And then in the middle, we're going to incorporate much more nutrients into the dish by adding a date. So usually I'll add uh, a majul or mahul, however you say it, um, donut in the middle of it. Um, And that's to add more sugar to it because my palm uh, coconut sugar does not have that much spice. Uh, Sorry, sugar content. Sugar content. Sugar content in it. So the date gives it that added sugar kick. Um, otherwise, if you want to skip adding the donut by all, date, by all means do it. But donuts, not donuts, but dates are very, very, very good for you. And I'll be talking about them in a later video. But I encourage you to start incorporating and eating some dates in your meals. And once you have that, you're going to get some parchment paper. And we're going to put that onto the parchment paper. And we're going to go through the whole process of making the eight balls into the donut and pressing the donuts in it. So once you put it in the parchment paper, place it on your steamer. So I usually use the traditional Chinese steamer um, to be able to get my things going. And once that is there, I'm gonna start boiling my water. So I usually use 
uh, an egg quart pan and I fill it with about five liters of water uh, and I put it on the stove and I heat it up and then I have this little gadget that has it's like a lid with a circle in it I don't know what to call it but it basically holds my steamer up so I'll put that on top of the pan and once the water has boiled I, I will go ahead and um, let the dough well, the, the the water is boiling is what I'm saying. While the water is boiling, I'm letting my donuts proof again because we need them to get to another swelling level. And that usually takes about 15 to 30 minutes to do. So once they have proofed, please go ahead and press the donuts back, the, the dates back down into the donuts because they will kind of pop up. Um, so press that back down. And then now, once the water has boiled, place the steamer on top of um uh your the bamboo steamer on top of the pan i'm losing my train of thought here please forgive me i uh, put it on top of the pan and let that steam and usually i'll let them steam for about 45 to an hour i usually like let it go uh, i forget about it i don't really pay attention to it it doesn't burn it doesn't do anything to your food it doesn't overcook there's none of that because that moisture is just adding moisture to it typically you'll start to smell it um, and then once the steaming is done um, and I have let it boil for about an hour time I turn off the heat and I let it sit so the steam is still going and I'll let that happen for another 30 minutes and then once done voila you have your steamed donuts now I usually put these in the freezer as a to-go thing um, it's one of the things that I prep so it's, it's a very good meal prep thing um, in the event that I, I, I'm, I'm, I didn't wake up very early and I need something for breakfast type thing so I'll put it in in the freezer and I'll forget about it and I will consume it as I go I do have some right now that have been sitting in there for two weeks and they're still fresh you pop that into the microwave for about a minute and you have a fresh donut to go and ladies and gentlemen that is my yummy tasty cataman coconut steamed donut thank you so much for watching the entire video please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when i post new recipes on youtube please be sure to sign up on my website i'm cookingwithnamia.com to get full recipe details you can also purchase this downloadable recipe card on my res website along with any other of my favorite recipes on my channel. Your support will keep these recipes coming and is greatly appreciated. I will see you on our next video.